Hi! Welcome to Art Adventures with the Walters Art Museum. My name is Elizabeth and today we're going full steam ahead, which means we're talking about how science, technology, engineering, art, and math come together. People have been combining science and art since the beginning of art. Today we are focusing on the world of pigments. What is a pigment? For our purposes, a pigment is the natural color of something. Pigments give color to paint and inks in artworks. We are going to learn about how artists and craftspeople have used minerals, plants, animals, and chemical processes to create the colors that we see in works of art. To get a better look at this, we are going to visit the Manuscript Gallery. This part of the Walters Art Museum is set up to educate visitors about the art and history of handmade books. We are going to focus on the pigment section. Let's start with mineral pigments. Mineral pigments come from rocks, stones, and metals in their natural state. Not every rock can be a pigment, but here are some examples of rocks that can. Orpiment, cinnabar, azurite, and lapis lazuli. In order to use these stones, and in order to use many pigments, they must be ground into a powder and mixed with a liquid or medium in order to create an ink or a paint. A lot of different liquids could work, like wax or oil or water or even egg yolks. In fact, egg yolks are a very popular medium, or were a long time ago, to make a special type of paint called egg tempera. The proteins in the egg yolk actually help the pigments be better able to bind to the surface of the artwork. Let's use the example of lapis lazuli. Now, this eagle from our collection is carved out of a piece of lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli, when it's ground, is the main ingredient in ultramarine blue paint. Blue paint for a very long time was expensive, meaning that it was often used to indicate that a character in a painting was very important. Here are two examples of that from the Christian faith. Here we can see Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is wearing a blue robe. And here we can see a painting of the Archangel Raphael, also a very important character. Now let's move to the next row, which is earth, plant, and animal pigments. Earth pigments come from dirt, or more specifically from colorful clay, like sienna. Plant pigments come from plants. One example is saffron. Saffron is made from the stigma, or the polleny part, of a special crocus, and it creates a bright yellow color. It can also be used to color and flavor foods as a spice. Animal pigments are made out of, you guessed it, animals. Female kermé insects can be crushed to create a bright red color crimson, and murex snails produce a secretion in their bodies that can be used to create a special type of purple, Tyrian purple, because it takes a very large amount of snails to make a very small amount of dye. Tyrian purple was expensive, difficult to make, and only available to the wealthiest people. In fact, Tyrian purple fell out of favor in the 13th century because it became so expensive that not even the Holy Roman Emperor could afford to have his robes made out of Tyrian purple. Good news for the snails, though. Here is a piece from our collection that gets its colors from plants and animals. The yellow is saffron. Lastly, we're going to talk about artificial pigments, or pigments made on purpose by people. Artificial pigments often rely on chemical reactions, or when two or more substances interact and create a permanent change. An example of a chemical reaction is oxidization. Have you ever seen apple slices turn brown by sitting out in the air? That's oxidization. Oxygen in the air interacts with polyphenol oxidase, an enzyme found in apples that causes a permanent change in color. Chemical reactions can change the colors of pigments too. Let's compare lead, a poisonous metal, to lead oxide, a poisonous pigment. Totally different colors! Copper can be turned into copper oxide and copper carbonate, 
both of which can be used as pigments. Over 4,000 years ago, ancient Egyptians began to use copper-based pigments to create many of the beautiful blues and greens that we see in their artworks. So what have we learned today? We've learned a little bit about how artists have created colors from the world around them, and a little bit about how science and art interact. What are some experiments that you could do to create your own pigments and paints? Now Emily is going to show us how we can make our own egg tempera. Go grab an egg! Emily here. You can make your very own egg tempera paint with these simple materials. But remember to set up your workstation outside, as things can get a little messy with this activity. The supplies you'll need for this activity are a crushing rock, a fork, spoon, two tablespoons of water, though it's good to have extra on hand, an egg, paint brushes, colored chalk, newspaper, and containers, one for each color. To start, lay a piece of newspaper on the ground, break off a small piece of chalk, and begin to crush it into a fine powder with your crushing rock. Once the chalk is mostly powder, you can use the spoon to scoop the powder into a container. You can then use the back of the spoon to crush any small chunks even further. Next, crack an egg and separate the yolk from the egg whites. Flop the yolk into your two tablespoons of water and discard the whites. Now, use the fork to whisk the egg yolk and water together until it is frothy. Then, using a paintbrush, slowly add the frothy mix to the powdered chalk until the mixture is a paint-like texture. It's sort of like making brownies. Repeat these steps for each color of paint you want to make. Now you are ready to make your very own homemade egg tempera paint painting. Once you are finished with your homemade egg tempera paint painting, snap a photo of it and send the photo to familyprograms@thewalters.org to have your artwork included in our online gallery. We would love to see it. Thanks so much for watching.